Here we are at Cleveland Exhaust to get the VL tuned. We um, beat the Hoff to work this morning. The Tom and I got up nice and early and left the Sunshine Coast and drove down the notorious Bruce Highway uh, nice and early. Al couldn't make it today. He's at the bald and bearded swingers convention and um, apparently he's getting his head polished today, something for free, which he didn't want to miss that opportunity. So it's just Tom and I today. Uh, it's a nice day to get the car tuned. It's, it's middle of summer, but it's actually a little bit cooler. So there's a little bit of rain around. Um, lower ambient temperature is always great. So we're going to throw this thing on the dyno and get it tuned, see what power we can make. The engine is fresh. We've got some running oil in there, so we will have to do an oil change halfway between through there. But that's no, no worries at all. This is obviously a fully functioning workshop. Um, got to kind of wait till the Hoff rocks up to work, I suppose. You might have to go get a coffee or something for him. So let's get into it. Where's the Hoff, mate? Sleeping in. Dropping his kids off. Dropping the kids off. You like it? You're a fan? Good kid. It's no VK. It's no VK, you reckon? What do you think of RB30, mate? Looks good. Looks good? I mean, it's no um, 2JZ, but... Yeah, it's about the wrong side, but we'll make do. I don't know, I like it, eh? It's good. The car is strapped down and a wideband sensor installed into the exhaust. The Hoff then starts by double-checking the ignition timing. He then connects up the laptop and checks out the fuel maps. The ECU already has a map installed, so the Hoff only has to make some minor adjustments to the idle settings. The vehicle details are input onto the dyno computer and Scott starts tuning the car at different speeds and varying loads. This also helps with bedding the new piston rings into the ball. So the Hoff's rolled straight out of bed and straight onto the dyno and run the VL up. Everything is pretty bang on. Um, obviously modified a few things here and there, but we're ready to kind of start pushing on it a little bit now and squeezing it out. It's still got um, cheapo running oil in it at the moment. So we're just going to quickly dump that out, throw in some quality oil, throw that in there, and then we can start squeezing on it and making some, um, making some numbers on the dyno. Hang on, why am I doing this, Tom? It's your car. Oh, it's hot. Nothing like rolling around on the ground in the morning and getting covered in oil, eh? What's the predictions, Hoff? What do you reckon it's going to make? I think he wants 400 rear wheels, so. so that's a customer request. <laughs> we'll stop there. <laughs> With the engine oil filled back up, Scott jumps back in and begins to apply more load and RPM to the engine. The Hoff is constantly monitoring the AFR ratio during each run. He then checks the data logs and modifies the maps accordingly.
225 horsepower at seven pounds of boost. Now it's not much, that is just the wastegate pressure. Um, Tom, the owner of the car, has instructed the Hoff, he doesn't want to push it on 98, he is going to run it on E85. We've got a flex fuel sensor so we can take advantage of a flex fuel tune. So we're going to drain the tank now, throw in some methanol goodness and see how we go. The 98 octane fuel is drained from the tank by removing the feed line from the rail and pumping it into a jerry can with the car's fuel pump. 40 litres of E85 is added into the tank and Scott fires up the Haltec ESP software. The ethanol content is now sitting at 65% which is perfectly fine for a flex fuel tune. Scott then makes a few adjustments to suit the ethanol content so the RB30 is happy at idle and then moves on to tuning at low speeds. Once a car is behaving on E85, Scott gets back on the loud pedal, still monitoring the AFI ratio, and observes how the RB30 reacts to more fuel and timing. With some changes made to the map, we've made an increase of 55 horsepower until the RB30 decided to stop playing ball. What happened Tom? He broke it already. <laughs> Not even big boost yet. Are you worried? Uh, the Hoff will sort it. Hey? The Hoff will sort it. He'll sort anything, yeah. mate. The Hoff's been screwing some boost into it and we're currently making 294 horsepower and about 14-ish pound. Um, ran it up and it just died and we suspect that the um, non-genuine China coil that we use, the LS coil, has failed. There's power to it but there's no spark there. So we've raided the Hoff's workshop for another coil. We're going to install this one and see how we go. Steal more or less parts hey mate, this how are you? First time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, last time we were here we stole a um, tensioner, a belt tensioner off Jake's car. Now we're stealing LS coils off, I don't know whose car that was next door. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> The aftermarket ignition coil is substituted for a factory Denso coil and Scott can now continue tuning the car. The headphones that Scott is wearing are a pair of knock detection earmuffs which let Scott hear any detonation if any occurs while the car is being tuned.
So there we have it, 388 horsepower, 19 pounds of boost. Um, there's a bit more in it. We've kind of found the limit of the standard LS coil there, so the Hoff wasn't uh, keen to push it any further, and Tom is more than happy with the power level. Um, as far as I've been told, he hasn't driven a fast car before, or nothing with this much power, so I'm sure he's in for a bit of a treat when he finally gets to drive it. I suppose the next thing to do is probably take it down to a track and actually make use of it. Um, I know Tom's keen to maybe take it down the quarter mile, see what I can do. Huge thanks to the Hoff at Cleveland Exhaust. If you're ever in the area, need your car tuned, a tow bar or an exhaust, you know who to call. He's an absolute legend too. Uh, thanks to Chris Ethel, just because he's a mad dog and he's got a cool van. Um, let's get this thing to a track, take it on the road. So he made it. Uh, it's been a couple of months since the VL's been tuned and we're down at Lakeside Park. It's an all Aussie day. So today consists of all Australian cars. Al couldn't make it, he's uh, skippering on the big boat ride, but that doesn't matter. It's just gonna be me and Tom and a couple of mates in the VL. So we'll go for a bit of a cruise and check out some cool cars. So there was a bit of a downpour before. Um, the track has dried out though. There's, some heat, there's heaps of good cars here today. There's, all Australian, mainly just holding fours. I don't think there's anything else. Has this seen anything else? Not much, eh? Hey. There's a the odd one out probably that Gemini maybe, but it's mainly just Falcon hold like Commodores and Falcons today. Some really tidy cars, some really expensive cars around too, which is uh, some people have got a lot of balls bringing them to an event like this because there is some um, spirited drivers around having fun on the track. So we're just going to go line up in the pit lane and then wait for the next cruise session and jump on out line up against some cool cars. This is the first time I've been at Lakeside, eh? Which is a good track. This is where Millsy comes, I think, with his, with his bikes. A lot of offs. Silky, silky smooth this thing, eh? Yeah, man. Comfy back there? Yeah, right, it's nice. I like this U day, it looks really good. Can she So today's event's really good. Um, not only just to get a bit of track time, but just cruising around the track, seeing other cars is great, but just walking the pit lane, like, there's, there's an awesome variety of cars here. It seems to be that it is an all Aussie day, so there's a lot of Falcons and Commodores. It does seem to be overrun with a lot more Falcons, though, I do believe. The uh, Barra seems to be the weapon of choice. With they're absolutely everywhere, actually. We're just surrounded by them. <laughs> but with such a good car, you know, they've got lots of potential. Why not? Easy to throw, throw a few dollars at them, make some good power, and bring them to events like this to have some fun. And that's that's what uh, Friends End Raceway is doing, is holding events like this. Is get the hooning off the streets. Come down with some mates. Throw your mates in the back of your VL Commodore and have some fun. Nice FGU here. Seems to be a VA. You just never know how much power they've got either. He's got Like this thing foggy. The great thing about it though is that most of these cars, like he probably drives that every day, you know? Yeah, yeah. We're noticing it every time we come out here, they get faster and faster. Yeah. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
got to watch those G6 e turbos. They're sleepers, eh? They're a nice car, though, eh? I do like them. Grips up pretty good with four people, innit? It does go well. <laughs> So since having it tuned, Tom, you been driving it much? Uh, this is the first proper hit, so yeah, yeah I've been. Um, I don't know you need back up to the shed a couple of times, but that's just a bit, bit busy. So Sunday Arvo drive up. This is a good chance to see how she goes. Something of the same calibre. Sounds pretty staunch, eh? It does sound very staunch. It's, it's really clean, too, eh? It's tidy. Kids for a drive. That's what these days are about, eh? Wish I did that as a kid. My dad had like a shitty old van and he had a Jaguar once, but that was still slow. I think it was. No. Good on him getting the kids out. Get a line up against the Toronto. First crew session on. There's more crew sessions, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of chopping. We got chopped a few. <laughs> uh, all in all, that's a great session. This is such an awesome day. Yeah. If you have the chance to get to go on these events, go and do it. It's great. Keep it off the street. Go to a track. Lots and lots of fun. Session number two has begun. Back in the VL, it seems to be a pretty serious XB. Like drag car here coming up in front of us. It's pretty gnarly. Did have a GoPro malfunction, so unfortunately we're missing one angle, but that's all right. I'll get the trusty iPhone out. That thing is sick. <laughs> in the back, we've got our mates. Has from Dunning Kruger Motorsport and another mate Oxy. Oxy's got a really nice XY just like old Cox. I don't know whose is better though. I think his might have me, mate. You reckon his is better? Yeah, I was looking at that video you put up, I think his is a bit nicer. Ah. Don't 
Don't tell him that though. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that I really like seeing. XW wagon. Fun little race. I think I might be leaving a bit early. <laughs> you are getting a jump on a couple of them. <laughs> and it's very hard to gauge though, dude. Yeah, I know, it's like a... Maybe it's us. Yeah, maybe it's us. Well, maybe it's you guys. You're losing all the races in the last race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's felt a bit better in the first couple of runs, actually. Is this a cruise factory or a skin factory? The, this is, at the moment, it's a cruise factory. <laughs> this, is the, this is the VL finale, mate. It's all done, done and dusted. We're out here enjoying the car. There's only one thing left to do. What's that? Skid. Oh, skid. <laughs> it's an XY too, what do you think this is doing a bit of a disservice to that guy? You call it an XW, mate. I only called it an XW because it's got XW plates. It says XYW, maybe you can't decide. Oh, does it? XY wags. Ah, XY wags. Yeah. Tom's all over it. <laughs> you don't want to tell a man with an XY that he's got an XW. Is that, is that a bad thing, is it? Yeah. I've got a lot of appreciation for those cars after being an old Cox. Yeah, dog. Tried to skid it. <laughs> Did start to spin a little bit, eh? Yeah. Do you reckon he has got over 600? On a Mustang, I know for sure. In America. <laughs> it's pretty easy to make 600, 600. American Mustang horsepower. It's pretty easy to make 600 with an FG motor, dude. Does it make 600? Nice, <laughs> dude. Got the brake boost going. Brakes wouldn't hold mine any further. <laughs> I think it's probably safe to say that thing does make over 600 horsepower. Definitely started to take off. Definitely in second gear. <laughs> that thing's got berries, eh? <laughs> Lots of berries. And it just looks standard dude, it's the best yeah. thing about it. I love it. Stock Absolutely rims, it. don't have massive tyres. I dig it man, it's quiet, it's comfortable, it goes fast. Fan. As it proves. Thanks mate. It's comfy back there, eh? Right? Still wanted to be a cruiser, so I reckon that's fit the bill. Yeah, I reckon you can get the nail on the head with it. Cruiser achieved. So that's the last cruise session done and dusted. We're heading back into pit lane now. Uh, all in all, I know Tom's stoked with the car. Yeah, mate, very pleased. It's fast, it's comfy, uh, it's clean. I know that comes down to how much Tom loves this thing and how much he looks after it, but it is. It just does, the camera doesn't do it justice how clean this thing is. It's just so neat and tidy. Um, as, as approves, yeah, I'm quiet. sure Oxy does, even though you're a Ford man. Two thumbs it's up, quiet. no, I like it. Quiet, it's comfortable, it's fast. And that's, it ticks all the boxes. The good thing about this car is you can do this. Come jump in with some mates, go for a drive, and it's the awesome thing to do. So that's us done for the day. The VO has performed outstandingly. It's been an epic day, and the car has performed how it was built. It's got a safe amount of power. It makes good power to go fast, beat a few cars. Yeah, we got chopped very well. It's just, that's what it is. There's a heap of fast cars here today, and those barriers, they just make some good power out of nothing. 
It's good to come down here and jump in the car on a Sunday with some good mates and go for a cruise. Tom sent money in all the right places and it just goes, these skinny little 205 tyres just hook up and it goes in a straight line, it's great. So thanks for watching the build, it's been an epic day, it's been an epic adventure for the VL. Thanks for coming along. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like, jump over to our social media pages, Instagram and Facebook. We've got a lot going on over there. And if you're even more of a legend, jump over to Patreon. It really helps us out. We've got a lot going on in the Skid Factory at the moment, so be sure to keep an eye out. We're giving away a few little clues here and there as to what's coming up, but there's also some stuff that you guys don't know about. So keep an eye out for some future episodes. Thanks for watching.